Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams. Um, some, t some people in my neighborhood call me the people's advocate. Uh, um, the purpose of today's lecture is to teach poor people how to deal with landlords in an uh, abusive situation. Now, if you m are now currently moving to a neighborhood and you have some money stacked up, maybe you've got first and last month deposit, maybe you've got uh, some electrical deposit and other money, uh, and I know that money is power, so that money's in your pocket, but before you sign a lease, here's some things that you need to do in today's market. Uh, first off, uh, I want to talk about the concept of fraud by inducement. Now, this is a legal term of art, which literally means that a poor person or someone who is at a disadvantage has been induced into a contract uh, by somebody not acting in their best interest. So uh, many landlords sometimes do this. They will ask prospective tenants to put money down to sign covenants and within contracts uh, uh, stating that they won't uh, reject their lease or, or they'll pay. Uh, uh, these are hidden contracts within the, the contract. So the first piece of advice, read the contract thoroughly. Read it carefully. If you are not a very good reader, don't feel pressure to sign on the spot. Ask to take the contract home. Ask someone else to review it for you, someone who, who can read better. Second thing, I, I see this happening a lot currently, is bed bugs. Um, bed bugs are written about 5,000 years ago, and the Egyptians talked about the sweet smell of bed bugs. If you walk into an apartment complex, a new rental unit within a car apartment complex, and you instantly smell a sweet kind of smell, uh, smells like uh, coriander maybe, suspect bed bugs. One telltale sign is if, you, if they still have furniture within the apartment, lift the mattress up and look for vertical red and black streaks down the side of the mattress. Um, Another tactic that landlords might use on you is they might say that you can have pets, but you have to pay a substantial deposit. Now, anyone entering into one of these type of adhesion contracts, basically, you can come on board as long as you do this, this, and that, you should know that you're probably never going to see that money again. Uh, I don't care who you are, any animal is going to leave a smell at least if not a physical remain and uh, so you should kiss that money goodbye in addition go and inspect the apartment at night maybe drive up to the apartment complex park a car turn the lights out just hang out for a minute listen to what's going on you can it's not a reasonable expectation for you to move into a neighborhood and then everybody else change their lifestyle behaviors and patterns of practice just because you moved in. Uh, I can't tell you how many clients I, I, or per people I talk to who uh, move into an apartment complex or any other uh, residential dwelling and they're very dissatisfied. And I'm like, mm, didn't you know it was kind of ghetto before you moved there? At any rate, that's probably one of the, the least uh, uh, important things to study. The key to being successful in a contract negotiation is to never take the first offer. If they tell you you can move in here at such and such a rate and you can have this kind of deal and this kind of deal, you say, thank you, I'd like to consider it, let me leave my phone number, I'll come back. If you make a good faith showing that you're really interested in the, in the apartment complex or uh, whatever it is and, and you actually are making steps to get there they're going to see that and that's going to uh, translate into a lower uh, rate secondly don't underestimate the internet the power of the internet if somebody is telling you that an apartment in this district of this city supposedly costs this much per square foot or whatever your metric your unit of, of gauging fairness Get on the internet. Look around. And, and don't just spend five minutes. 
Spend some time. Do your research. Do 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 diligence. Look around. Um, here's another thing. I think a lot of people, especially young people, forget. Proximity to grocery stores. Proximity to pu major public tr housing. Uh, ma major public uh, roadworks and transportation are very very important. A lot of young people get hooked up on the money and I can't tell you how many client I say clients people that come to me and tell me hey man I just spent I got the super deal $250 a month utilities paid and then I ask them where it's at and it's in some obscure section of town very far away from where they work or go to school it, it there's no market nearby it's in an isolated pocket and I'm thinking to myself, you need to look for a, a couple things when you're looking for a new apartment. Probably, and I tell young people this all the time, get somewhere near a, a major community or a transportation hub, whether it's a bus depot. You, when you're young, you got a piece of junk car. Usually, your car's not reliable. If you have a job or you go to school, you need a backup plan. Get an apartment along those lines. And usually, the apartments that are situated thus on, on the major thoroughfares and, and whatnot, look, typically are better apartments. Spend the extra $100, $150. If it means that you can't buy something else you really want to buy, that's something you can give up. But the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a situation where you have a bed bug epidemic, a roach epidemic, you got neighbors that are, are hooked on drugs. Uh, don't do that. If you have to spend a little bit more money to do it, make it happen. Okay, I got uh, four minutes left, so I better get on out of here. My name is Joel Z. Williams. I came to talk to you about landlord tenant issues, but mostly what the, the purpose of this lecture is to let young people know if you're going to rent a new apartment be wary read the contract take your time look for the telltale signs don't ignore your gut if you're going to go into a, a neighborhood and uh, and check it out do it at night do it when people are out on a saturday night on a holiday weekend see what it's like at its peak if you can deal with that noise and the dog barking and the children screaming and running, then you're probably going to be able to deal with it at any other time. All right. Joel Z. Williams, the People's Advocate. If you have a question, please put it to, to the site. I prefer video responses. Thank you very much. I'm out.